morning. I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Well, we had action in the barn last night. Uh, quite a lot of good and some bad. That's farming. Anyway, let's go inside and see what today has in store for us. Come on, you guys. The first thing I was told to do was to go check out Belle. Bell is one of uh, my Suffolk Texel Cross ewes. She's a beer. She's the one who we gave physiotherapy to her as a lamb. And she has a long tail because we didn't think she would survive. So we didn't feel we should even bother putting her through the ordeal of having her tail docked. But here she is, I think it's nine years later. And uh, I gotta go have a look From at her. Quick glance, you can see the wall jugs are still not full. But if you look down the row in the front jugs compared to yesterday, they look a little different today. Just looking down the line here. Hello? This is the one whose mom doesn't let her nurse. Hate to jinx it. But yesterday I was standing watching and the lamb was nursing. Right now the lamb's nursing without her tied up, but she's always done that if she was eating. So, and I checked her milk and she still got milk. These lambs were all born the other day. These, these ones were born yesterday. Here's Belle. Belle, Belle. I hear you have two lammies. And Belle has a pretty big udder, apparently. Oh yeah. So you see, here's the problem with uh, old ewes with short legs, because she's got Texel in her. So she's shorter. She's got lots of milk, but gravity just brings that udder right to the ground. So the lambs may have a hard time nursing until they figure it out. So I'm gonna go in and milk her teats out and see how she does. Okay, these are the ones with the mom with the plug teat. This lamb, I'm gonna check, but I'm pretty sure it died last night. That's the bad news of the day. And that's the little tiny one. That's why I didn't want to name it. I fig we figured there was something wrong with that one. This, this mommy had a lamb last night. And this one had a lamb last night. This is the sister to the, this mom is the sister to the one that had the little tiny lamb. Oh, and this one is special. Let, let's see the chin. Lift that chin. It's, she's not been in mud. <laughs> she's got, she's got a little goatee. <laughs> little tip on her ear. Oh, mom, is it a girl? It's a girl. And this is why we can't get rid of sheep. Because we always see somebody really cute and we want to keep it. We're addicted to sheep. Mommy. So this you is the sister to the other one. I've just walked in the barn for the afternoon check. And I have to help those lambs get on bell again. Because they it's uh, gonna be a learning curve for them to figure out they gotta get on their knees and get those nipples in their mouth. Um and as I walked in the barn I saw my lamb that's the rejected lamb here. She's in the second pen. Look, she's nursing and the mom's not tied up. Is a miracle. Good girl, mommy. That's a beautiful lammy you have there. You should love her. That, that is extremely encouraging. I never thought she would do it voluntarily. But she's gonna. They're gonna stay in here for quite a while longer. But. The more the lamb nurses on her own and mom lets her, 
the better it is. And see, she's chewing her cud. I've never seen her chewing her cud when the lamb nursed. She, she's still not the most loving girl, but hey, that's a vast improvement. So we, we take all the, the good we can get during lambing season because it, it's a tough time of year. And uh, that's an accomplishment. So we're going to look down the line, see if anyone's having lambs. Uh, the bottled babies at the back, I'm only feeding them twice a day because all of them have moms with milk. And when I was feeding them three times a day, they were being fussy and spoiled and not wanting to do the bottle holder. Hi, Mom. You've got a beautiful lammy. But at twice a day, they're more willing to go to the bottle holder. And uh, like I say, nobody's like an orphan that absolutely is going to die by missing a feeding. So I figure they can suck off their mom all day long. And then uh, at night time before bed and in the morning when they're more hungry... I, I top them up because basically that pen right now is a top-up pen. You look beautiful, sweetheart. Bell Bell, are your lambs nursing? Well, the ewe lamb actually looks really bright, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. You look for um, crying lambs. Oh, there, she just talked to her. But I will uh, get them up in a minute and see how they're doing. And I'm going to have a little rant today, too. Because I was just in, in the house taking a break and reading some of my YouTube comments and answering some. And there's a certain person that has been harassing me, like, for the last little while about telling us that asking us why we would have Suffolk that they're a useless breed can't make money on Suffolk you can't make money on purebreds you can't make money on anything unless you're a commercial breeder and that we're somehow fudging things and not doing things right and misleading people and you know I, I do get that everyone has their opinion and a right to their opinion but we're doing a daily vlog. I'm not making money doing this. I'm doing it because, for one thing, we're really proud of our sheep and what we do here. So um, I want people to see the sheep uh, because I think they're fantastic sheep. And that may sound conceited or whatever, but we've worked really hard to get them to this level over the years. And we've invested a lot of time and money and selection criteria into making the sheep the best we can have. And as far as being profitable, like, I don't think we'd be in it this long if we weren't profitable because, I mean, this is our living. We're not working off the farm and making a supplemental income. Um, I think if you have good quality sheep, I don't care if they're commercial sheep or they're registered sheep. There is always a good market for good quality stock. And this person said that uh, commercial breeders wouldn't pay the price of a high quality ram. It's not worth it to them. And it's like, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because for sure, 97% of all our customers are commercial breeders. And yeah, we do have the odd commercial breeder that comes in and says, I'll give you $200 for a ram. But I mean, I figure they, they, they're they the same type of guy as this guy who's making the comments because most of them pay the higher price for the good rams and they buy our replacement ewes. And not only that, they come back. And they come back because... Our sheep are making money for them. They're putting meat on faster. They're growing faster. They're producing better lambs. Better lambs mean you're going to have more money in your pocket at the end of the day. And 
we charge a little bit more for our lambs than market lambs. And I mean, a market lamb, we, we, have, we sell our ewe lambs for about $100 more than a market lamb. To me, that's a really good investment for your money. We sell our rams for an average of $1,000 a piece, breeding stock rams, and you see what we're buying. We're, I, we don't own a ram, I think, anymore that's uh, less than $3,000. So again, you're getting good uh, money for, um, good bang for the buck <laughs> if you buy from us because we're investing high quality animals into giving you uh, a good quality sheep for a fraction of the cost. And I just find it offensive when people do that because it is a daily vlog it's it's about our life it's about our our days sheep farming uh, and it's it's basically showing how we do things and i do try to explain why we do things the way we do them and i certainly am not dictating how other people should do it and i don't know where the hostility comes from but um, I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. So I actually deleted his comment. <laughs> and I've never done that before. But I, I was so frustrated. And I thought, oh, no, I should have answered back. But then I thought, no, why would I stoop to that level? But the point is, I'm not trying to compete with anyone. This is just what we do. If you don't like what we do, don't watch. I'm not making money doing YouTube, so I don't, I don't need the harassment, and um, I don't need the extra viewer. Um, I, I have been extremely happy, and the only reason I continue with the YouTube is that I've met some unbelievably fantastic people through YouTube. Um, I've been on many other social media sites and uh, they can get a little nasty too but I always found that YouTube the people were just awesome and so thank you for all the loyal viewers but uh, February is not the time to get on my back or January when we're tired and working our butts off to produce these sheep so that's my little vent for today I did a nasty thing I deleted somebody <laughs> but yeah I actually don't care but as you can see I'm back here this is a group we're getting sheep lambs from right now because this is the leftover group and there's a lot of big girls in here but nobody's lambing right now these these misfit guys are gonna want food when they see me but I'm not gonna feed them because they do need to suck on their mom a little more we'll have a peek in at these girls these girls technically are due tomorrow hi are you gonna be tomorrow you can wait if you want. You can wait. Because you're beautiful. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. It's Heather, isn't it? Heather, you are a darling. Heather had a lamb last year. Well, she didn't have a lamb. She lambed for the first time last year. She, so she was a first timer. And she had triplets. And you raised them all, didn't you, sweetheart? That's tough on a first timer. It is. But you're lovely. Aw, oh, sweetheart. Hi. So she's one of my big babies here. <laughs> it's funny because we did have a commercial guy came in and he bought, he was buying, I think he bought, I think he bought three rams from us. And he, he, did, he wasn't a fan of suffix. He was buying some of our Texel Dorset crosses and uh, Heather came up she was she was just about to go into a breeding group and we were I said isn't she a beautiful you and he says that you is never gonna make your money because <laughs> because Heather here 
again, COVID came, but she would have been a show you. That's a nice you. And uh, I thought, yeah, probably she's going to have a single. Big you and a single. But Heather proved everyone wrong. She had triplets. You're a good, good, good girl. Yeah, you, you proved those naysayers wrong. This shoe did lose her lamb, and I just, I just, um, Arnie tied her up because we wanted to make sure there was no pressure on her udder, and because she's not got a lamb there, and it was r quite full, so I, I milked a bunch of it out, and we discovered blood in her udder. So, you know, it's like this whole pregnancy didn't go well for her. So we just gave her a shot of drugs to help clear up whatever's happened to her udder. I couldn't see any like clumps or anything coming out into the milk, but it was red. So we're treating her so she'll stay in here. And um, hopefully she'll have a better year next year. There she goes. Let's see what happens here. They've never been in a big pen. Give me that clipper there. Okay, so this could be a good experience for them in a bigger pen. And Arnie's on a bit of a roll, so we, he got Belle with a big, big udder here. No, she's, it's a soft bag. It's not a hard bag. But uh, it's difficult for the lambs to reach, but one just gave a little yawn back there, so they look good. So Belle is nine years old. She's a Suftex U. So her dad was a Texel and her mom was a Suffolk. When she was born, she was like Legolas. She couldn't stand up, but she was way worse than Legolas. Like it, uh, she couldn't stand up and walk around for what a week maybe even 10 days but then and and we thought she was gonna die so and she was uh, she must have been yeah we we thought she wasn't gonna make it so we didn't have the heart to dock her tail and that's why she has a long tail but she obviously did make it, and we bred, bred her that year, and she had twins, and she's had twins every year since. She still has lots of milk. Her udder definitely isn't looking beautiful anymore, but uh, that's just age, and Texels do tend to have bigger udders, we find, but hers is soft, which you want to see, and it's got lots of milk in it so um, all good things and her but her name is Belle Belle, Belle. Belle. <laughs> poor old girl we always like those gray face ones we're always pretty I think the other is that bad. Is, uh, it's bad enough, but I think what's bad is uh, Texas is short-legged sheep, and it just makes the other look even worse. Yeah, that's, I said that this morning. It, the, with the short legs, the udder is much more closer to the ground. <laughs> but that's Belle's story anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing with Belle is... When she was a year old, she got a lump on her jaw, right where Casius would be. We didn't have her tested because we do vaccinate for Casius. 
So it could have just been an infection that happened to be in the same place. Uh, we popped it, squeezed it, got it out, and as you can see, she has no sign of a lump now. And like I say, I made note of that because I wanted to see how serious a problem Casey's was. Like, what, what was it going to do to her productivity? And if that was Casey's, I'd say it did nothing to her productivity. Nothing at all. But it may not have been caseous because not all lumps are caseous. They can get poked by thistles, straw, hay, anything, and it can get infected. And when you squeeze it, it looks like a, a caseous lump. So the only way to be certain is to take it and have it tested. The only time I ever did send away a sample, it came back as... Um, not cases. It came back as some other thing. It began with an L, I think. Um, so it wasn't. But, yeah, I guess actually, um, because we use Glamvac 6, apparently if you test your sheep for caseus, it's going to show up positive because of the vaccine. So it wouldn't have helped anyway. But I was very curious to see how it would affect her, if it would, if she would, you know die younger or anything like that but obviously not she is in the old girl group one of our oldest sheep of all hi Belle. and she looks pretty tired today yeah it's uh anyone who's had babies knows that having babies is exhausting this is this girl here who had the lambs yesterday. This is her first lambing. And she's uh, got a little bit of Texel. It would be, she would be from a mom like, like Belle, but bred to a Dorset. So she'd be a Suftec Dorset cross. And her lambs would even be more Dorset because she was bred to a Dorset. This is the problem you have with really low to the ground udders. You have to teach the lamb to lay down to nurse. Right, Bill? He has to lay down to nurse. He does. It's just a camera. But I got him laying down and he's on. For the first little while with big low to the ground bags, you have to kind of teach them to do that. And then they got it. Oh, he's off. We got some ice melting off the roof. They hear the gate and they run straight to the trough. So, I guess we're going to call that a day. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.